Overlord Volume 3 Chapter 5 PVN Part 1 There was the sound of sizzling, as though someone had thrown a burning torch into water. The spell which surpassed the very definition of tears went off, and it looked as though the sun had risen on the land, dyeing everything in his field of view a brilliant white. The exothermic conflagration generated a rapidly expanding wave of heat, which greedily consumed everything within its radius. This hell of a vision lasted only five seconds, but it felt dozens of times longer than that. Eventually, the brilliant white world disappeared. In the wake of the vanishing pulse of super-hot energy was a large circular area, vastly different from before. Nothing outside the area of effect was affected. The trees were still trees, the earth was as full of vitality as the forest, and the forest itself was untouched, an extremely normal world. In contrast, the area within the circular area was charred black, converted into a dead zone of jaw-dropping proportions. The awe-inspiring temperatures had consumed all the vegetation in the area, leaving only a few carbonized tree stumps. There were several vitrified areas on the ground which were still emitting smoke. Standing beyond the bounds of that world which permitted no survivors, Ains felt a dreadful presence washing out from within. It came from the only person who remained within that area. Nothing living could have survived that fatal heat. Kakaha kakaha that strange sound, accompanied by what seemed to be a gnashing of teeth, filtered into Ains's ears. He turned to look at its source and saw a point of red amidst a world scorched black. He saw Shaltir with wisps of smoke trailing off her body, and a look on her face which seemed to say, not enough gun. Her crimson pupils, filled with hostility and bloodlust, focused on Ain's body. Ain Sama. That really hurt. Shaltir slowly walked forward, her footfalls fracturing the charred ground underneath. Step by step, she shrank the distance between Ain's and herself the spit lance in her hand cutting through the air with a whoosh which indicated that she was still able to fight. Arcane magic casters could only show their true ability at long range. Ains had no frontliners to cover for him, so there was no advantage in allowing his foe to draw near to him. Yet, Ains did not scramble back. In a tone which called to mind an image of a champion welcoming a challenger, Ains arrogantly taunted Shaltir, that was just a meaningless present. Did you like it, Shaltir? Ahahahaha. Shaltir laughed, and her mirth came from the bottom of her heart. Wonderful. To think I have to kill you, the all-powerful Ain Sama. Sama, you say. Why do you address me as Sama? Who is your master? What a strange question. Is it not natural to address a supreme being like yourself with Sama? As for my present master, Shaltir's face scrunched up as though confused. Why do I have to fight you Ain Sama? Ah, is it because you attacked me? But why would you attack me, Ain Sama? I need to destroy anyone who attacks me with all my strength? Why is that? Before long, Shaltir seemed to have come to a conclusion, and her smile from earlier returned to her face. Well, I'm still not too sure why, but since you attacked me, I must destroy you Ain Sama. Is that so? I understand. I understand what kind of state you're in. Oh ho, what's wrong, Ain Sama? You look a little weak there. How can you beat me like that? Humph, aren't you getting something wrong? Do you think someone like you can defeat me? Defeat Ain's Olgown? The name of Ain's Olgown is invincible. Shaltir, you will kneel in submission before me. Ahahahaha. <laughs> oh, how scary moving with a speed which put Gales to shame. Shaltir charged, wreathed in bloodlust. The scorched ground exploded beneath her feet with every step she took. Clementine's assaults were swift, but Shaltir's speed was in a class of her own. For an instant, Ains was grateful that he did not need to blink, because Shaltir was fast enough that he would lose track of her if he took his eyes off her for a moment. Trailing laughter behind her, Shaltir continued her charge, aiming the tip of her lance at Ains and thrusting forward. The lance charge was originally a technique used by mounted knights, and made with the speed and weight of their mounts behind it. However, Shaltir's strike, made with her extraordinary strength and her awesome speed, easily surpassed that attack. The word one-shot kill could not even begin to describe that assuredly fatal blow, and it tore through the air towards Ains.
However, despite the ever-approaching tip of the lance, Ains remained unmoved. In a gentle voice, he said, It's dangerous, you know. The tender warning he gave Shaltir, as though concerned for her well-being, referred to the countermeasure he had prepared for Shaltir's attack. As Shaltir attacked, the triplet maximized magic exploding mind spell, which he had cast beforehand automatically triggered. The three explosions blew Shaltir's body away. As Ains saw this, he apologized in an even more compassionate tone, Shaltir, please forgive my late warning. Actually, there were mines there, maximize magic gravity maelstrom. She was still flying back from the force of the explosion, when Ains hurled a black sphere after her. It was a spinning vortex of hyper-intensified gravity, that could significantly damage a target, even one of Shaltir's level. At this moment, Shaltir stood back up from her down state, and held out an empty hand. Wall of Stone A vast wall of stone emerged from the ground, completely enveloping Shaltir. The gravity maelstrom Ains had thrown collided with the wall, causing it to bend, twist, and crumble, but the gravity maelstrom vanished as well. Humph! Maximize magic hold of rib. As Ains followed up with another spell, massive ribs erupted from the earth, and closed in on Shaltir like a bear trap. The sharp points of white bone bit deeply into Shaltir's body. Ka! Normally, this spell would have continued holding its target after damaging them, but Shaltir easily shrugged free. This was because she was immune to movement restrictions, resulting in the failure of the attempted restraint. Shaltir, I forgot to tell you, but I've already set mines around this area. How about attacking me from the air instead? In Sama, I won't take the bait. You've put traps in the air too, haven't you? Was that so obvious? Yes, I saw through it long ago. She chuckled, and the red flames in Ains' eyes dimmed. There was nothing of the sort. The mines Ains had laid just now were the only set. Neither had he set traps in the air. This battle was not an easy one where he could waste MP on ineffective spells. Therefore, he had used the mines as a bluff to hamper Shaltir's mobility. He had narrowed his eyes after she had stepped into it. However, now was not the time to relax. Ains was the challenger in this battle. He was walking a very fine tightrope, and he would fall if he was not careful. Ains knew this, and he was not stupid enough to become complacent over a small victory like that. Still, that's Ains Sama for you. A simple charge like that couldn't close the gap between us. There was genuine admiration in Shaltir's eyes and her voice. At the same time, Ains could sense the fighting spirit she radiated from her entire body. The real show's about to start. If Ains' body could produce sweat, his back would probably be a flowing river by now. In any case, I need to keep doing damage until my MP runs out. If he could not do that, then Ains would be set on the road to defeat. Diamond suit, diamond suit, diamond suit, Shaltir braced the spit lance, narrowing her eyes at the magic caster before her, at her master, Ains Ilgown. She had no idea why she had to oppose her beloved master, but her mind told her that it was not an important question. All she had to do was kill him, and then ponder the matter at length afterwards. As she calmly considered this, Shaltir considered the current situation a one-on-one -on -one fight, against an undead being, and how favorable it was for her. Magic casters, particularly arcane magic casters, were incredibly powerful, but that power derived from their MP. Once their MP ran out, they would naturally lose their fighting ability. On the other hand, Shaltir might have been a divine magic caster, but she was also adept at melee combat. Even if her MP ran out, she could keep fighting as long as she had HP. Therefore, even if she could not deplete her foe's HP to zero, she could still win as long as her enemy expended all his MP. This was especially true for an arcane magic caster like Ains, who had no means of recovering his health. So please tremble in fear at your dwindling HP and MP. Ahaha, my heart pounds so hard whenever I think of Ains Sama's terrified face. Then, what was the best way for her to fight? It would have to be a drawn-out battle. Shaltir gripped her divine class spit lance as she hastily threw a battle plan together. 
That weapon's special ability was to recover the wielder's health in proportion to how much damage it did to an opponent. No one could say that this divine class item was designed around that special property. This was why Ains, the eternal backliner, had not summoned any minions to be his vanguard. He was very aware that summoning weak monsters to tank for him would only serve to recover her HP. Ah poor Ain Sama. He can't summon frontliners, and has to fight all by himself Shaltir cast mana essence as a sadistic grin formed on her face. That spell permitted her to perceive her opponent's mana for a while, and so Ain's remaining mana appeared before her. That's a lot of mana, how did he amass that much? Ains had about one and a half times the MP, mana, of Shaltir. There was probably nobody else in Nazareth who had a mana capacity like that. He truly is a supreme being. One could call him an extraordinary undead. A super undead, no, a godly undead. That said, she still did not think that she would lose. Perhaps it might be different from the other guardians, but to Shaltir, Ains and his enhanced necromantic attack spells were hardly a challenge for her. Of course, I mustn't be careless. That said, why isn't Ain Sama wearing his divine class equipment? The robe Ains wore now seemed very plain to her. It lacked the dignity of his usual black robe. Could it be that he wore it to deal with me? It's very likely, but there's no point just staring each other down. Nothing will happen. So let's restore some health first in preparation for a drawn-out battle. Regenerate. The spell Shaltir had just cast could even recover the health of the undead. Currently, it was restoring the health lost from the super tier attack spell. At this moment, Ains launched another attack, throwing out a gravity sphere like just now. Maximize magic gravity maelstrom. The black orb approached at great speed. She considered casting the wall of stone from before, but that would not put any pressure on her opponent. She would have to make the first move if she wanted to greatly decrease her foe's mana. Shaltir selected, greater teleportation. The plan was to teleport into close range and begin melee combat. Her field of vision distorted, but the scenery that should have instantly appeared before her eyes felt like it had been slowed down. Che. Shaltir guessed that this was the effect of the teleport impeding spell, delay teleportation. As Shaltir had guessed, she was quite a distance away from Ains, when she should have been deposited into the range of her spute lance. Instead, she saw three sparkling balls of light before her eyes, made by the drifting master mind spell. Shaltir sensed the mines and assumed her mist form to evade them as they flew toward her. This skill transmuted the body into mist, and it was quite a flavorful skill for vampires. However, it did not transform the body into the physical phenomenon called mist, but instead phased the body into the astral plane. Thus she could use it to completely avoid attacks in the physical world, the three explosions which resulted. Naive. After Ains' shout, he followed up with a maximized magic astral smite. That spell could strike astral entities, and it found its mark on Shalter's body, whose defense had been somewhat reduced after taking mist form. Racked by agony, Shaltir terminated her mist form. She felt her lips split, and something soft and slippery escaped from within. Truly marvelous, as expected of you, Ains Sama. Ains did not respond to that honest praise. He merely studied his opponent with doubtful eyes. You can't believe me, right? But I do feel you are someone worthy of my loyalty. He was very good at spell combat, after all. Still, Shaltir's lips could not help but curl up in a smile. This was because Ains' MP had diminished greatly. Shaltir's health had decreased somewhat, but that amount of damage was well within limits. In contrast, Ains' mana had gone much further down than anticipated, so it was well worth the loss. In other words, Shaltir was one step closer to victory. Then, how about this one? Shaltir made her move. Force Sanctuary. White radiance filled the area around Shaltir, a defensive barrier made of pure mana. While this barrier impeded the caster's attacks, it would also completely negate her opponent's attacks. Through this barrier of light, she saw Ains scrambling to cast a spell. That's right. If you don't cast a spell soon, it will go very badly for you. 
Shaltier already knew why Ayn seemed to have the upper hand in this battle. Was it because of his abilities? No. Was it because of his equipment? No. Was it because of his preparations? Yes. Indeed, these favorable circumstances were due to Ayn's extensive preparations and many spells which he had cast beforehand. The power of magic casters varied greatly with their preparations for any given situation, and the same applied to Shaltir. Therefore, Ains should have been trying to break Shaltir's defenses before she could buff herself up. Shaltir was poor at defensive spells, and she had no intention of casting them. Her aim was purely to drain Ains' mana. She smiled to Ains as he frantically cast his spell. My my, everything's going according to plan, Ains Sama. Still, you're not even using scrolls, staves, or wands, are you trying to preserve your strength? Are you too panicked? Or did you know they weren't effective against me? Ains' magic resistance completely negated the effects of low to mid-tier spells, regardless of how powerful their casters were. In contrast, Shaltir's magic resistance was affected by her opponent's stats and levels. Even a tenth-tier spell by a weak magic caster would not be able to breach her resistance, but against a powerful magic caster, like Ains, first-tier spells were the limit. Some scrolls were affected by their creator's skills, but for the most part, they were made at the minimum possible level that allowed for their creation, which also meant that they were fixed at the lowest possible caster level. Thus, there was a high chance that scrolls would not be able to breach Shaltir's defenses. Was that why Ains had not done it? As Shaltir analyzed the combat conditions, Ains continued casting a spell. Maximize magic thousand bone lance. Countless, well over one or two thousand, lances of bone erupted from the earth around Ains. The ivory spears assailed the defensive barrier from all directions. Soon, she heard the sound of what seemed like glass cracking, and Shaltir's protective barrier shattered with it. Scattered chips of bone flew in all directions, melting away into nothingness. Che. She had not expected this magic barrier, upon which she had spent a significant amount of mana, to be broken in one move. Shaltir was unable to believe this as the attack on her continued. It's not over yet. Maximize magic thousand bone lance. Greater teleportation. Her teleport destination was an open space in the air, outside of the delay teleportation spell's area of effect. Don't think you can get away, maximize magic gravity maelstrom. Shaltir had expected Ains to follow up with some kind of attack against her. His spell came flying over, as though aimed at the place Shaltir would appear after teleporting. She seemed calm and collected as always, but Shaltir was quite fascinated by Ains' incredible prowess. These masterful abilities could only have been honed through long experience. You seem to be taking this quite easy. Shaltir's opponent, she was not quite sure why she had to kill him, asked, Why is it that you are so at ease while fighting me? We are on the same level, but my gear is stronger than yours. Granted, my specialty cannot be brought to bear, which is to my disadvantage, but that is all. Still, I can sense the confidence from you, your belief that you have the advantage, and that victory is assured. A sense of superiority filled Shaltir. Ah ha ha then I shall show you the one of the reasons why I can take it so easy. Did you know I had a skill like this? With a smile of victory, Shaltir evoked an impure shockwave shield. A wave of force, colored reddish-black like clotted blood, spread forth, disintegrating the gravity orb upon contact. This was one of Shaltir's skills, which combined defense and defense. Che. Ains clicked his tongue at this. Shaltir had done so earlier because things had not gone as planned, but for Ains, it was because he could no longer relax around her. Aha! Shaltir laughed at Ains' expression, and then she showed off another special skill of hers. A gigantic divine lance appeared in her hand. It was well over three meters long with an especially large head. The aura of purity it emanated proved that this was no ordinary weapon. It reflected the rays of the sun in its silver radiance, producing a beautiful and eye-catching display. Oh, I've never seen that before. Did you summon it with a skill or something? Ahahaha, ha, ha. we'll see how long you can act tough, Ainsama. Since you don't seem to know this weapon, 
allow me to introduce it to you. Its name is the Purifying Javelin. Shaltia released the Platinum Lance as she laughed at Ain's ignorance. She did not throw it like a javelin, but instead it rose by itself and darted out. This was a weapon which was guaranteed to hit if she spent additional MP, Gorg. And hit it did, piercing Ain's chest. In Shaltir's eyes, that unmoving skull seemed to twist in pain. Ah ha ha ha. That's a holy element weapon for you, it seems like it was quite effective. Shaltir summoned the gigantic lance to her hand again, and cast it forth once more. The lance traveled at unavoidable speed, this time piercing Ain's shoulder. Ku. Don't look down on me. Maximize magic reality slash. Ains cast a powerful spell. When one reached the highest level of the strongest warrior class, world champion, one would learn the supreme, ultimate skill called world break. This tenth tier spell was merely an inferior copy of that skill, but it was still among the most damaging spells in the game. It cleaved through the very fabric of space, and fresh blood fountained from Shaltir's chest. A hit from this powerful attack spell could disregard virtually any form of magical defense, but the damage dealt converted back into health and flowed back into her body, as though time itself had reversed to render the attack completely ineffective. Ains howled at this, what did you just do? There's no need to get worked up, Ains Sama. That was a skill too, Shaltir answered as she gloated over him. Che. In other words, my skills won't work and you can do as you please, huh? Please don't think this is unfair. This was an ability which Peroncino Sama bestowed upon me. In other words, that great being is superior to you, am I wrong, Ain Sama? That felt like it came from the heart. That emotionless tone, or perhaps it was so calm that one could not pick out any emotions from it, filled Shaltir with doubt. However, before it could settle in, Ains shouted again, Here I come, Shaltir. I'll show you that no matter what skills you have, none of them can hold a candle to my magic. Aha! Uh -huh. You want a showdown of firepower then, Ain Sama? Don't think I'll lose to you. A maximize magic reality slash spell crossed paths with a purifying javelin, each tearing into the bodies of their targets. As the two of them traded attacks again, Shaltir laughed at Ain's foolishness in her heart. At the same time, she was confused. Why am I fighting Ain Sama? Shaltir Bloodfallen was a floor guardian of Nazareth, set over the first to third floors. At the